Good afternoon. This is Jim again with uh, replacing Jean-Claude Villet, still in France. And uh, I just wanted to uh, present uh, today um, as an easy way as far as opening wine, opening a, a bottle of wine. And what I'm featuring here today, I've got a couple different wines that I'm featuring. And I pointed out in the last little session that I did that if you look at a bottle of wine and you're trying to learn more about it, get confident about it. It's like reading something that you would do um, as far as uh, what kind of products are in a box of cereal or such. You want to read the label. And again, I just want to emphasize that even on the Yellowtail, this is a nice little Australian Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it's uh, primarily the Cabernet grape. It doesn't tell me that it's a 100%, but it doesn't tell me that it isn't. However, on the back, again, if you were to uh, be uh, waiting tables and trying to come up with something that might work with a chocolate dessert or a, a delicious berry uh, dessert, right on the back it tells me flavors that are going to be a part of what they think are in this wine are blackberries, chocolate, vanilla. Great combinations for not only the, the food, the main course, but for dessert, for a little uh, something to finish off dinner. Dinner doesn't always have to have a complement of a sweet dessert. You can always have a nice glass of wine to finish off your dinner. And so this is uh, from the southeastern area of Australia. Uh, Vinda is a little place uh, that it is uh, from here. I said Vinda Yenda. But the, uh, the grape itself, beautiful. Australians are making great wines. I'm not going to open this one today. Not yet. I'll drink that one later. But I've got a little Stone Cellars uh, Chardonnay. It's primarily, as we had said before, Chardonnay grape. Yeah, it doesn't have to be 100% Chardonnay in order for it to say Chardonnay. So it has to be majority, and that's usually 60% um, or more. Is It's usually 50% or more, but you're going to find more than 60% of a grape. This one tends to want to emphasize the fact that uh, a cirrus flavor or apple or uh, those kinds of flavors are what are going to be uh, prominent uh, or predominant here. Tropical fruits. Great wine to get nice and cold on a hot day. If you're serving on a deck out on the restaurant, uh, in the back of the restaurant, this is a great wine to serve ice cold. Let your guests sit there and just chill and enjoy this wonderful wine that uh, uh, can be ice cold as well as a nice Sauvignon Blanc or a uh, Chenin Blanc. Great wines. Uh, Pinot Grigios, Pinot Gris, any of those can be great wines to get ice cold and sit on the back of the dock or deck on a hot day uh, and, uh, and enjoy. And then consider what you're going to have for dinner. So, I'm going to open this one up. I always want to keep this simple. This is a primary, uh, this is a pretty standard type of key that you'll find in most restaurants uh, or most waiters are, are using. Uh, they're going to find a nice little blade. You're going to want to keep a nice little edge on this blade and uh, sometimes your chefs will do that for you if it starts to uh, get a little dull. You have the cor corkscrew itself, excuse me for my little hiccup, and of course the part you're going to put on the edge of the bottle. I'm going to do this uh, not so quickly, but I'll just take my time and do it nice and clean. You're going to see on the bottle itself there are two edges, one up here at the top and one down at the bottom. Uh, depending, uh, I mean if your restaurant has a preference, then uh, go with the preference, but normally you can select one of those and use it as your wedge or your lever um, uh, fulcrum if you want, to, uh, just to kind of guide your cut all the way around so you have a nice clean cut. If you can, don't rip off all the foil. Sometimes it happens, so clean it all up. Make sure the bottle looks nice. So, here we go. My head's disappearing, but my body's still here. I'm going to, if I were to serve this to a guest and I presented it and they said, oh, that's beautiful, we'll take that. I'm going to keep it in my hand. I, pre I prefer not to put it on the table. And I usually have a towel within my hand, but I want to keep that label pointed towards the guests them themselves. And I'm just going to go as far as my arm will take me over here on this other side and bring this blade all the way around and then finish it by flipping it back in my thumb here and just kind of slowly guiding it back around. Just kind of peel up. So you've got a nice clean little cut. You've got a clean edge around the bottle. And if you've got an apron or a pocket with you, as far as your clothes, just stick it in there. Tuck your blade away. You can fold this part out if it isn't folded out and get your blade, your uh, corkscrew. Now I like to put my finger right behind 
the, the point of the corkscrew and at the top bury that right into the middle of the cork and push it down with my finger and as I'm pushing it down I'm lifting up so now it's going to give me my guide and I'm going to give it a little turn it's going to give me a nice straight cut straight in again I'm not tilting this bottle to the guest this way I'm just showing you that this is going in nice and straight I don't want to bury it all the way in but I want to give a little start on the cork itself so this uh, part this is where you're going to use a little bit of uh, science and you want to pull this cork you want it to come straight up and you don't want it to bend or twist you don't want to crank it this way or that way but you want to use this little lever here as a fulcrum so you use your finger to guide and keep this against the, the top of the bottle and you're just going to pull and break this loose now, as you can see I've got a nice straight start on the bottle and I'm just going to finish this now if I have to at this point if we're in a French nice French wine or a nice quality wine where the corks real long I might want to put this back in a little bit further to make sure I'm going to get down further into the cork from there here I go I'm just going to finish pulling this out nice and slow you're right at the top now you don't want to jiggle you don't want to splash it but you can take your fingers and just easily maneuver that cork right out nice little pop great sound and you can grab the bottle with your hand you've still got your fingers on the cork twist your corkscrew out while well, you've still got the cork in your hand you can close that up with one hand kind of looks fancy a lot of people do it click it and flick it right back into the pocket get the cork now synthetic cork in this case still you want to present it to the guest just to let them take a look at it some people smell it some people don't bother but they'll just look and make sure that this bottom part has got a nice clean um, uh, bit of, uh, of wine to it this being a white wine you don't see it but you don't want the wine running up the side you, you know that is telling them that the cork dried out that the bottle was sitting up straight and got replanted on its side so thank you very much guest you can inspect that cork um, and now I've got the bottle I've got my little towel I'm going to pour a little glass of the wine for the guests to try. And uh, next uh, we'll talk about uh, tasting the wine, really getting some of the flavors. Everybody picks up a different flavor. This wine is nice. It's open. It can go into an ice bucket uh, at the side of the table or on the table if that's fine, uh, depending on what restaurant you're working in. If you're at home, you can put it, uh, put it back in a cooler um, and uh, have yourself a nice glass. But we'll talk about a couple different glasses and pouring some of uh, the wine out. This is Jim with HowToBeABetterWaiter.com. Thank you very much for joining me and I hope that uh, we see you real soon. Uh, we have other websites by the way if you have a chance to check them out. The Concierge of St. Pete or ConcierofStPete.com will let, you, uh, let us help you plan your visit to St. Petersburg, Florida. Also we've uh, created a little blog called uh, uh, the uh, Concierge St. Pete uh, vacation blog so that'll help uh, we're going to start putting some videos on there and some things from local restaurants and businesses in the St. Pete, Paso Grill, uh, uh, Madeira Beach, Treasure Island, all this area that we have this Clearwater area that's beautiful in, in Florida so we can get you down here we'd love to have you come down and visit again Jim with howtobeabetterwaiter.com signing off have a great day